Um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm John Hunt. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Lotus Flower Trust. I would like to ask you to support the building of an Anganwadi. An Anganwadi is a kindergarten in Panamak Village in Nubra Valley in Ladakh in India. It's one of 30 we've been asked to build uh, and fund by local education department. Each one costs £10,000 and so far we've funded seven. I was the regional general manager of Marks and Spencer in Northern Ireland some 22 years ago when I decided to stop selling ladies knickers and leave the business uh, and set up a leadership development charity for A-level students. We put them through a management training course, culminating building and repairing schools in the many countries across the world, including India. The poverty of India really unsettled me and so six years ago I decided to move on and set up the Lotus Flower Trust to work with Indian children like these. They live below the poverty line. Funding the building of, we fund the building of schools and homes and such like buildings in remote, rural, and often environmentally challenging places. I know, I've already been asked, some of the audience will ask me, why India? You will say it is a rich and corrupt country with space age technology and a growing economy they should look after their own. Fair question. Remember it. We have a population of 63 million. They have a population of 1.2 billion. Dealing with their poverty is a real challenge and they desperately need our help. More people live in poverty in eight states in India than in the 24 poorest African nations. 276 million live below the poverty line. The poverty line is less than £1.25 a day. Try living on it, I have. A further 413 million live below the empowerment level, with no sanitation, no schooling, no housing, and every chance of slipping back below the poverty line. That's 680 million. 680 million, that's half their population. One third of the world's poor children live in India. The largest crime in India after drugs and gun running is child trafficking. Half a million children between the age of 2 and 16 have been forced into the flesh trade with an annual increase of 10% per annum. Nearly half of India's children are denied the fundamental right of education. Personally, I can't walk away from figures like that even if other people can. Now here's me with some kids. They've got no. nice clothes on because I took them out for them. So with my trustee colleagues, I try to help just a few of these children, and I wish I could do more. I work full time, I don't take a salary, I don't believe in using money meant for children for myself. We do employ two ladies each four hours a week looking after our bookkeeping and our PR. Our administration costs 10% of an average turnover per annum of about £170,000. To date, we have successfully funded construction of 24 schools and homes affecting the lives of over 2,000 children from all sorts of regions and castes and backgrounds, like the Janet Sheen Roberts Residential Home for Special Needs Children. This is their home. On one day, if I finish my training properly with these feet, they're going to run in the Special Olympics. And some of their stories are really harrowing. Barty had her hands blown off by dynamite. She's writing Sanskrit up against her chest. Um, and we provided her with new ones. Ashram Shala Savada for salt workers' children in Gujarat. This is where they lived, and this is the home we provided for them. And thank goodness we've got them away from this life, because they would spend their lives raking salt in temperatures of up to 50 degrees C. And the worst of all, the Brahma, ho Brahma Putra home for railway children in Guwahati. They live in number two gate slum, Guwahati, Assam. That's their address. And this is the house we've just built for them, or we've paid for. This is a rag picker girl. Pretty, isn't she? What sort of a future will she have? There are few teenage girls in the slums in India. Most have been trafficked into prostitution. And this is Abdul. He's hooked on dendrite, Tipex. 
glue sniffing. He won't make 18, I'm afraid, he's 14 years of age. Most boys of his age are similarly affected. They steal to pay for their addiction. So getting the little ones away from the slum to our home is of absolute paramount importance, particularly the girls. And we have many other projects for which we need money. For example, there are over 13 million runaways in India. A friend of mine looks after 200 children in Delhi, in Lucknow and Gorakhpur. They're so disturbed that when they come to their homes, they can't remember their names. So they're given one, Ashok, Devika, Amrita. But the children wanted a name of their own, so they've called themselves Manas, their surname. It means human being. Humanity is their religion, and they're members of children of Mother Earth. And of course, we still have a further 23 Anganwadi to fund. The Dak is an autonomous region, part of Jammu Kashmir. It's mountainous. I'm very barren, here's a project we're working on at the moment. They're both classed as educationally and financially <coughs> backward. Most families don't see education as a priority. Children are born to work on the land. They don't send their children to school early enough for them to get a good education. And education is the only way out of poverty, I'm sure you all know that. But by building an Anganwadi, oh yeah, the children are wonderful. But by building an Anganwadi, which is what we built as a primary school, next to the primary school, by being run by local women, it's hoped the mothers will feel they can leave their children in safe hands. There they will start their education and this will help their transition to primary school and further on to education and out of poverty, thus underpinning the education of children across the home country. This is Trishul Gomer, it's a Muslim village, and those are all the children and their parents. If you support this project, I'll put the money towards the 10,000 it will cost to build the Anganwadi in Panama. Oh, by the way, Panamik can only be reached by crossing Kardungla. Kardungla is the highest navigable pass in the world at 5,600 meters or 18,300 feet to people as old as me. <laughs> Our logo reflects the Dalai Lama and the, work of the Buddhist, uh, the work we've done with the Buddhist people. Can I thank you all for listening so attentively to my presentation, which I make on behalf of some of the poor <coughs> children of India. And I leave you with one little girl we've helped. Oh, where is she? Thank <laughs> you.